Greetings from the Alphon campus here in Hinckley, Maine. Uh, today I want to talk to you about what we're doing in week six and how it applies to what we did in week five, and I want to zoom out and give you the broader picture of what we're up to. So, as I've said before, your first assignment in this, in this class is to write about yourself, a relatively easy topic, but also challenging at the same time. And so now we're going to switch focus, we're going to start writing about objective things, things in the world, tools, products, those types of things. And that's going to serve us well because basically for the remainder of the semester we're going to be writing about those things, either procedures or uh, pieces of equipment or mechanisms. And so it's really critical for us to, to start commanding our language and to start thinking really carefully about our audience, what they know and what they need to know. And so that's really where we are. So in week five, I had you write a series of definitions, and the reason I had you do that is because, as I've said, with our newfound knowledge comes a language that we have to be able to share with others. And the only real way to share that is to be able to define it in useful ways. And so in your reading, we really started to learn that definitions are sort of telescopic based on the reader's needs. We can sometimes define a word simply with another word, what we might call a synonym. Uh, sometimes we take a whole sentence to define a word and to create distinction between that word and words that are similar to it. And then sometimes we have to write stuff on the order of an entire paragraph or sometimes an entire page to really explain thoroughly what a term is and what it means to the reader. So, and you know, frankly, we could have done better on that assignment, and so that's why I'm having you revise those definitions. And I want you to pay really close attention to the, the formal definition strategy that's expressed in a couple of your handouts because I think that that's going to be a really important fallback skill uh, that you're going to need in your instructions assignment, that you're going to need in your recommendation report assignment, and that you're going to need in your safety fact sheet. Um, and it's really a great tool because it's uh, kind of plug and chug. Uh, yes, it requires you to think. Yes, it requires you to classify the term really carefully so that the reader's sort of gaze is limited. Um, but once you start to do that, and once you start to practice that, you could become really skilled at making your specialized language accessible to other people. And so I really want us to practice that. And I don't want it to be a throwaway assignment where you, you know, basically, you know, write whatever comes to mind or you go to Google and you find out how it's defined elsewhere and you sort of repackage it and submit it. I want you to think really intently and critically about how you're defining terms because uh, it's a really important skill. And in fact, in some ways, it's really the foundation of technical writing is, be able, is being able to articulate and share the knowledge that you have with others. Um, and to make sure that uh, that knowledge and language isn't a barrier. And so I want us to spend time on that. But that's, that's just part, and, part of what we're doing. And then what we're also going to do is we're going to practice a type of writing. So uh, we're going to practice evaluative writing. We're going to practice assessing things. And, uh, you know, I don't want you to fixate on the fact that we're writing a product review because that's just the mechanism through which we're going to do it. It's just the genre that uh, students, I think, enjoy writing the most. But if you think about it in the workplace, you're asked to assess things quite a bit. Um, you're asked to assess people. So uh, a lot of times you're asked to assess your employees and their performance. You're asked to assess pieces of property sometimes. Uh, you know, uh, you're asked to assess acquisitions, so new equipment or tools. Uh, you're asked to assess policies and procedures. So we're a lot of times we're asked to evaluate the, the relative success of things, and we need to be able to do that reliably and systematically, and that's really what the review assignment's about. Um, and so I want to say a few things about that. Uh, one thing that should be obvious based on what we just got done talking about is that I want you to you know, be able to review this pro uh, product without you know, going off the deep end with regard to jargon and language. You should be able to communicate your feelings about this, your overall assessment of this product without having to rely on really specialized language. And that's probably going to require you to use some definitions and to be on the lookout for jargon and to make sure that, you know, the average Joe walking off the street without a lot of background knowledge in this particular domain would be able to read and understand it. Uh, you know, one of the things that's unique about technical writing is that we want a single communication to satisfy multiple readers. And so we need this review to not only be able to satisfy the needs of uh, what we might call a lay audience or a lay person, um, but we also want it to be, you know, useful and technical enough where it can satisfy an expert. And so that's really the challenge here. And the way that we're going to get to that um, is through a couple of uh, really key things. 
the first thing I want you to remember is to say one friggin' thing. And what that means is that in your communication, there should be an over, overarching uh, communicative goal. And that should be the bottom line. What's the bottom line about this product? What, what are you saying? Is it good, bad, in the middle? Um, is it good with a few caveats? Is it bad but with a silver lining? Um, and you know, to relate this back to the type of writing that many of you are familiar do, familiar with, um, consider that kind of like your thesis, right? That's the the you know the overarching uh, statement of the of the document. And then from there, um, we need to build. Um, we need to get the reader to the point where they see the validity of that statement. So if you say something is the best you've ever used, that's a high burden of proof and that's a pretty significant claim. And so the second thing, now in addition to saying one friggin' thing really clearly, the other thing I want you to pay really close attention to is the relationship between claims and evidence. So you're going to make a series of claims, probably based on a series of criteria about your product, and you need to make sure that you are providing clear, useful, substantive evidence to support that claim. And that's just the fundamental um, persuasive tactic and it's the fundamentals of argumentative writings because principally you're making an argument here. So if you tell me, for instance, that this is the most durable cell phone case you've ever owned, that's a claim. And that requires you to show us clear evidence that that's true. And it goes back to what we talked about in the cover letter, show, don't tell. Okay, you need to show me the truth in that statement. And so there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, one is obviously to point to objective facts about that product. So you could talk about the materials, the construction, the engineering, uh, any of those things are fine. But remember, um, we don't want to bog somebody down and talk about uh, the polyethylene polymer or whatever, uh, because chances are your reader's not going to have an appreciation for that. That may be an important piece of information to include, but you need to illustrate the importance and the significance of that uh, fact. And so the way, one of the ways to do that is to talk about your own personal experience to put those uh, pieces of data or those specifications into context. So I really want you to pay close attention. You're going to make a series of claims about your product and I want you to really pay attention to how you're supporting those claims. Uh, and I want you to use whatever you have at your disposal. So uh, certainly part of it is going to be objective, descriptive facts about the product. It's going to have to do with the technology. Um, it's going to have to do with the engineering. And that's great. And it's important for a reader to know that. Uh, but those are really features. And what readers generally care about are benefits. And that's an important thing to know because uh, for many of you who are going in uh, to various occupations, you are going to have to talk about uh, things uh, services, products with clients, customers, and fellow technicians, and you're going to need to be able to talk about them in compelling, useful ways. And one of the ways to do that is to focus more on benefits than on features. It's really easy to list a series of um, objective facts about something. What is more difficult is to explain why those facts matter to the reader. And so I really want you to pay attention to that. You know, baked into that also is this idea of criteria. And so when we're assessing something, uh, we need to make sure that the reader understands the method to our madness, sort of needs to see the calculus of how we got to our overarching or our, our one friggin' thing. And so I want you to think really critically about the criteria that you decide to use that sort of makes up the backbone of your review. And I want you to think carefully about the usefulness of those criteria. And I, those criteria should be derived from the types of questions and things that a consumer would really care about. I've said this before and I'll say it again and I'll probably say it a thousand times more. Um, you know, good technical writing in a lot of ways is the anticipation and the answering of questions before a reader has a, has a chance to ask them. And so when we write a review, we want to think about the burning issues that somebody's going to have in their mind. Um, and so we want to kind of start with those and a lot of times those will be your headings or those will be your sections or those will be your criteria and we can start from there and sort of build outward. And that's just a really important technical writing lesson. Um, is to start with those questions or to start with the burning concerns or uh, desires of your audience and build up from there. So just to recap here, um, when it comes to your reviews, I want you to say one friggin' thing and say it clearly. Uh, provide an overarching overall assessment of the product, but make sure that that assessment is built on a series of smaller claims, uh, which are usually going to be derived from a series of criteria, things like durability, price, uh, use, usability or usefulness, um, power, any, any of those types of things, um, convenience. Uh, and then make sure that you're supporting your assessments of those criteria with clear, compelling evidence. 
because uh, that's what a reader really needs to know. Uh, so, you know, and this, you know, we can transport this away from products and, and, and apply this to people. If I'm making a series of assessments about a person, I need to be able to illustrate those assessments uh, with clear evidence based on their performance. So I need to be able to point to things to say, yeah, this person's doing an excellent job across these domains, or this person's doing well in these domains, but not so well in these domains. And I need to be able to point to things. In some fields, that's data. In some fields, that's qualitative information, just observations of how the person conducts their work. Um, you know, not numerical, but more observational and so that's why we're doing this and, and so when you're reviewing your partner's uh, reviews in the feedback form I want you to pay attention to that and I want you just to approach it as a reader um, who has a genuine interest in this product and I want you to you know think about are my questions about this product answered and do I understand the significance of everything that's been discussed in the review if somebody makes reference to, a, say, a particular material, right? So they say, well, it's made of a nickel cadmium alloy, which I don't even know if that's a real thing, but let's just say that it was. Um, do you understand why that matters, right? Or if they say that this drill has a, you know, a 20 volt lithium ion battery, do they explain why that's better than an 18 volt conventional battery, for instance? Um, so that's really important. And then the final thing that I'll say is that the other thing about a review, a lot of times, is that we're we need some type of baseline or we need some type of frame of reference and that's why it's important and you'll see on the assignment sheet um, one of the criteria for my assessment of this project is that you make useful comparisons to other alternatives and, and that's really important because it allows us to see this not in a vacuum or in an isolated way but a, as a part of a larger sphere of things, um, available options. And so to be able to compare the Milwaukee drill to the DeWalt drill to the um, you know the cobalt drill gives us some sense of of where it sits relative to its competitors and it gives us a better frame of reference so that's what we're up to uh, and, I, and I hope that you spend a lot of time this week you'll notice there's not a tremendous amount of boxes on our checklist but each of them does require you to spend some time really thinking critically and I, I, I want you to always focus on your audience and your purpose um, your audience here is a general audience who doesn't have a tremendous amount of specialized knowledge like you do and your purpose here is to clearly assess and provide a credible useful assessment of something and that is ultimately going to be predicated on uh, the directness and uh, clearness of your message. It's going to be predicated on the usefulness of your criteria and it's going to be predicated on the relationship between your claims and your evidence. So are you clearly illustrating what you're saying? So again, to go back to that cell phone case, if you tell me it's the most durable cell phone case you've ever had, one, that's going to require you to tell us about past experience, probably. Two, it's probably going to require you to tell us a little bit about the physical description of the cell phone case. And then three, it's probably going to require you to tell us a little bit about your actual experience, your narrative experience. Tell us an anecdote or a story while well, I dropped it into the toilet and it went around four or five times. I fished it out and it was fine or, or whatever. Um, but those, those types of details are really helpful and they're going to really illustrate for the reader um, what a list of specifications or a list of qualities or a list of measurements or a list of materials isn't going to. And so that's what we're really paying attention to in our reviews. And you can see that language is going to be an important part of this. You either need to define the language or clearly explain the significance of the language in order to make that um, particular information accessible to your readers. So that's my mini lecture for the week. As always, do not hesitate to text, email, call. Uh, I want to help you uh, get the most out of this class. If, if you notice something that's, that's not right on Blackboard, please let me know. Um, but other than that, uh, spend some time in the feedback form. As it says, when you enter the feedback form, you really ought to be spending, especially um, in this particular instance where you're just working in partners, uh, you should be spending somewhere between 30 and 60 minutes uh, providing that feedback. So it's something that I want you to sit with and uh, sort of let marinate. And I really want you to provide substantive, useful feedback uh, to your to your partner's writing and that goes back to something I said a couple weeks ago uh, I can't tell you how important it is for you to be able to as assess a piece of writing that maybe you had nothing to do with and improve it uh, because a lot of times the writing in the workplace that you do is writing that you inherit that you have to update and revise and being able to understand uh, the ways that it is it could be improved for the reader's experience is going to be a fundamental um, skill that all of us need and need to improve on. Um, that being said, keep your eyes open for your uh, resume and cover letter grades. Those will be coming in shortly. I hope to have those done by Thursday. Uh, like I said before, one week turnaround time is going to be pretty typical, especially since we have such a big class. And then the other thing is, uh, remember that I will be giving you feedback on your technical review, so you'll submit them on Sunday. Uh, and I'll turn those around for you and I'll be able to give you some more feedback. 
Uh, and also keep in mind something that we talked about really early in the semester, and that is you can play with formatting. There's no preordained format that you have to use. I know I shared a, um, an example uh, review about a, a dome tent from L.L. Bean. Many people seem to sort of uh, use and modify and uh, retrofit that format, and that's fine. But you can also go out and look at other reviews uh, and see how they're putting their information together, and you can really be creative here. I, I, I don't like to tell you what to do because I think that part of being a, a, a good technical writer is um, kind of playing it as it lies and uh, trying to solve the problem as best you can with words and images. And so that's what we're up against. So uh, good luck, and let me know if you have any other questions.